with The Blend on One Kansas City Radio. Glad to have you back and really excited to introduce you to Church Boy, uh, born and raised in Kansas City. We're going to have him talk about himself, you know, what, how he came into his music, what some of his great projects are, and listen to some of his music at the breaks. So, um, Church Boy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, tell Thank us you about yourself. Me. Yeah. Um, Kansas City, Missouri, raised um, independent artist. Um, church kid, you know, heavy church influence and stuff. I'm doing my thing. Had the pleasure of meeting you. <laughs> and I'm excited to be on the air with you and to share the, some of the past work I've done and the future stuff that I'm working on. I'm just so geeked and nervous at the same time. <laughs> I got to let you interview me. My wife be like, let her interview you. I'm like, I got it, I got it. So, right. well, so we're in it now. We're, we're in, in it, now. it now. Hey, you took it there, so let's let's talk a little bit about that name. You were telling me earlier that you got that, that nickname. You grew up in this area where the yeah. studio is. Uh, 2636 East 9th Street off of Chestnut, um, down the street from a convenience store called Speedy's, which has now changed, and Humdinger's, a, 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 a phenomenal burger spot, you know. <laughs> Um, I got the name because I lived across the street from my church, and so I was caught in the neighborhood doing some things that wasn't so called, per se, the right thing to do at times. Not no crime or nothing like that, but, you know, hanging with the wrong <laughs> knuckleheads, you know what I'm saying? Right. So everybody knew me as the kid that would go across the street, unlock the church, and go practice on drums because I'm a son of a choir director, so... They always knew that I was serious about music, and I tried to go by another name, Little Show Me, starting out. And everybody was like, yeah, it's cool, because we known as the Show Me State. Right. But they was like, no, nah, that's Church Boy. So every time I come over, knock on my friend's door across the street in some apartments, I'd be like, oh, it's Kevin. Who's at the door? Kevin? Church Boy outside for you to come play. And that's what they would call me, Church right. Boy. I'm telling them who's at the door. Like, Kevin, they knew. It was like, that's Church Boy outside. So it's like... It's stuck. I'm marked for life. I'm a church kid, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. A lot of my musical study and and for us and learning emotions and sensitivity and, and, and discipline came from church. So church boy, he's a church kid, but he has I could say I got character. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Right. And you work hard. Work hard. You got a lot of projects going. Yes, a tell lot us, of projects. Tell us going. about something that you're really excited about right now. Um, I'm excited about having the opportunity to have went to Africa mm. with Gene Wine. I currently I play drums for Gene Wine. I've been playing drums with him for about four years. Um, I'm one of the I'm one of the bands he is. Um, I'm excited about that, and also I had the opportunity to track some studio work for Tech Nine and Chris Calico for their tours. I tracked drums for them in 2018, and there's a new song coming out that I'm featured with with Tech Nine. I'll be on a hook with Tech Nine. So I'm excited about that. Shout out to Tech Nine and all the Strange Music family. I'm very excited about that. Awesome. So what, do you know when that's going to drop? Or? I don't know when it's going to drop. Tech told me that he will keep me in the loop when it drops. All right. Well, you'll keep us in the loop? Of course. And then we'll all Of course, I would love to come peeled. back and share some new music. That would be awesome. Yeah, we're set up. We can set up for like a live play here. So oh, you, can yeah. a, you can do a session. Definitely. Yeah? Definitely. You can even sing today if you feel like it. Of course. If I feel it and move, <laughs> you know, <laughs> definitely. It, yeah, but if the, if the urge comes over, you I'll, just, I'll, just, urge and, and, I'll just push and, back and you can yes, take the mic. Of course. All right. So when I met you... You were working hard, too, because I remember that night I picked you up at the EP. Yes. We loaded drums. Mm -hmm. We took them home. And then you took me to the Buffalo And I took your vocal room. cords over to the... To the Buffalo room. To the Buffalo yeah. room, right. Yeah, it was, a, it, that was a, it, was a, it was a work night that night. Yeah? I earned that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely passionate to do awesome shows in the city. So, yeah, and it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, you, it was just a pleasure to meet you. It was just right on time. Let you know that somebody loves music just as much as you do mm -hmm. and appreciate it. Because mm -hmm. we don't just sing for ourselves. You sing for the people. Right. It's a servant. You know what I'm saying? I consider myself a servant. You know what I mean? Yes. I look at myself as a celebrity or as somebody famous because, you know, I don't play for famous people. I look at myself as I'm serving whoever my clients, whether it be Tech 9 or 
it be the pop or rich the factor, you know what I'm saying? Whatever capacity I have to serve, my job is a musician. Mm -hmm. I look at it as myself as a fireman, whatever he's serving. Right. You know, we all, everybody in the country should want to look at themselves as servants. You know what I'm saying? I Serve think I can hear that too, like in your songs a little bit. Um, and maybe as a husband, right? Mm -hmm. the, the spirit of service that you have mm -hmm. in that relationship. So, um, so talk to us a little bit about how, like, where does your music come from? When you write for yourself and you produce for yourself, where does that come? I know the collaborations are all like a synergy of different artists, mm -hmm. and we can talk more about that later. But when Church Boy is doing Church Boy, where's my, that, my where does that come from? My music comes from how I'm feeling at the moment. Like, something negative could probably could be bothering me, but I always have a grateful music buddy that can let me come in the studio and release my energy in a positive way or even if I'm in a good good mood but I'm always thinking constantly about music even if I'm at my job in the morning I'm always thinking about music music keep me going you know it's, it's therapeutic for me so my music comes from from deep down in my soul you know I think about a a good time or I think about a bad time but I, the song and the melody how I feel I know there's somebody out there it's probably feeling the same way. I, I I got the voice to make it come to life and bring it to a song and, and make a positive out of it instead of a negative. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, blues, you know, most time they the subject matter, they lost their woman, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but yeah. even though I could be singing a song about love, I still keep in the back of my mind that humility about the blues that I had when I did lose love. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what makes me unique. And my music comes from a bluesy, soulful, gospel feel. Like, you can't take the soul and the church out of me, you know? Dealing with the wave of how R&B music is changing and it's like, it's, it's doing its own little thing and it's starting to try to start its own little thing, but it all stems from soul. Like, these people here, like Al Green, Nancy Wilson, Charlie Wilson with the Gap Band, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So my music comes from basically all the ones that done it before me, like basically come from, I guess I say my parents who created me, you know, God mm. created me, you know, all the music they poured into me, gospel, jazz, like, you know, that's where my music come from. It's just like, I'm a melting pot. You can get anything from me. Huh. So of your songs, maybe talk about one or two. They don't have to be your favorites. I know it's hard to pick, right? Mm -hmm. But one or two that you might want to talk about the process of writing that or the process that came that that basically brought that song to, to come well me being married um forever I could say and I knew it was one because my wife she loved it I never really had a song a lot of my R&B songs was coming from heartbreak and wishful thinking you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. of what you would want in a relationship so when forever, forever came, which was co-wrote by my buddy Lenny Ewer. I call him Lenny, you know what I'm saying? He's from Baltimore, but he lives here. Um, I already had the first line, girl, you everything I want, girl, you everything I need. That was a line I borrowed from my brother Mike James Jr., which is one of my partners from Kansas City, Kansas. And I put it together. I already had the music, the soulful guitar, the tambourine, the, the organ element and stuff. And then my man Lenny, he went from there. He's like, forever, girl, we go. We float to places never known. Me and my wife, you know, we young. We didn't have much. And just to see us come up and, like, even though we poor, don't even know what you love, we so gold. Like, that's, like, one of my favorite records. Like, our theme song, like, forever. And a lot of people love forever. And it's featuring my bro, Errol Dixon, who used to be signed to an artist who's kind of not in the limelight too happy mm -hmm. right now. Just to, you know... We trying to stay positive in this interview, but right. well, Errol Dixon, phenomenal artist, one of my big bros and mentor, who I love dearly. We close beyond just the stage and music. One of my bros, and he gives encouragement. He keep it real, like, nah, church, that no wasn't it. But um, it's featuring him forever. Joy and Pain is is another one of my favorite records. Um, feature produced by. Uh, Dominique Sanders, who's a phenomenal musician. We talking about bass production. He produced it and he co-wrote it with me. Joint Pain, I wasn't in a good place. 
in my marriage. And so it's basically a song of encouragement for myself. I'ma love you through the joy, love you through the pain. Even on my cloudy day, you still put a smile on my face. That's really something that you want to encourage yourself. Like, I'm not too happy with you, but when you smile about something else, you put a smile on my mm-hmm. face. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So this, that was one of my favorite records, too. And then, of course, my intro, the shortest piece ever, Cashmere Sweaters and Bow Ties, the self-title. It's the intro. I really love that record because I teased them. They was like, that song could have been longer. <laughs> and I was like, I purposely did it like that. Like, let's start the show. You know what I mean? Right. Basically, I'm giving reference to my dad, who's a phenomenal guy. One of my first investors before anybody bought a plane ticket for me to play for him. My dad was my first backline company, my first stick endorsement. Worked plenty of overtime to make sure I had what I needed for my brother and my sister and his wife. I make reference to my grandmother, who's no longer with us, um, his mother, even at my grandma's house to get a meal. Like, I'm telling you, sometimes go over to grandma's house and she's got black eyed peas and greens in the freezer, and you're a kid looking at us stacking up on food to right, make it. Right. So that's one of my, them my favorite records off of there. And there's one record, of course. The Honey Bun record, which they won't get a chance to hear, but you can support me on all digital music. Not here, but go look at it. Yes, yeah. go look at it. That's that's me on lead guitar mm-hmm. and all my background vocals, and that's the first song that I recorded myself. Press record. My man Mike Michael James Jr. had did the editing and the mix for me. So, but I have recorded it, stacked my vocals, and I'm very proud of that record. So. That's Very just cool. a little short. Not trying to be long with it. I'm right. ready for you to speak some more because right. you're a phenomenal person. <laughs> so I really am very grateful for this interview. I, I receive it, and I don't take it lightly. I'm grateful for people to put the light on me. In what Kansas are some? City. Um, talk to us a little bit about your dreams, about co- what's coming up for you. Because I know you think you're thinking about getting back into the studio and working on I, some things. I, it's, it's a most definitely. I'm getting back in the studio. The, the, the the title of the project is already there. It's called The Offspring. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cashmere Sweaters and Bow Ties, the way I was initially going to do that was going to be like a series because it's only six songs. And I was going to do different art cover work for it. But we was like, Cashmere Sweaters and Bow Ties is still relevant. It's a lot of people that don't even know about it. But this next project that's going to be The Offspring is going to be a little bit more songs. They're going to get some surprises and get some remix and master and have some phenomenal features on there. We talking about Grammy Award winning musicians, all type of stuff. So I'm getting back in the studio for Offspring Forest Dreams that are slowly but surely are coming to life. I want to do more touring as a drummer. Um a lot of people don't know that PJ Martin is not a local artist, but he's Grammy nominated for his gumbo album. He played organ and keys with Maroon Five. So you I thought that was the coolest thing ever. He's a great entity in his own, and he brings his energy, what he brings to an even awesome band. I want to do touring and drumming and singing for other artists, but I also want to tour as myself because mm. it's just something I feel is just so cool. I got to do it. I know I can do it. You know? Right, right. So that's, that's, that's it's, it's, it's happening. It's all about God's timing, I believe, and it's, it's happening. So... Right. Touring for other artists and producing for other artists and also touring for myself. Talk to us about that trip to Africa. So I know the that trip was, to Uganda. That was quite an experience. Kampala, if I say that correctly. Please forgive if I'm not. That's the capital of Uganda. They call it the Pearl of Africa. It was wild. It was, it was a tearjerker, like, looking at all of the people and... It didn't sit in until we got to the last song, which is Gene Wan's biggest record, Pony. Mm. And I did like this. And I was like, yeah, still here. This is Africa. <laughs> uh, it's dark out, but it's still hot. It was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. No, it wasn't a perfect trip for me for us. My luggage getting there. Right. I will share this with you. Do carry-ons. Don't check your bag. Or both, right? 
Have a have a plan B carry on. Have, have a plan B carry you on. You can pack your your main suitcase if you want to, but just yeah. in case it didn't come just through. Just in case, but for me, thank goodness for my Christmas gift, I will be using my carry on bag for a twenty four hour flight. <laughs> but my bag didn't get there until I got off stage. Mm. I was able to look fly for the after party, but <laughs> during there, I was in sweats and flip flops the majority of the trip, and it was beautiful. I noticed that a lot of people get. Uh, get horror stories about traveling overseas. I just say, do your research. Go to the websites to let you know that's actual of what you need to have for his immunizations and stuff. And, and, and learn the law of the land and, and know about the, the currency there. You know, right. definitely know how your money works there. But Africa was beautiful and, and spiritual for me. Um, I did take a, I took a picture on the soil, I didn't post it yet because I'm still trying to savor for myself that my feet, my bare feet, has touched African soil. Mm. Um, it was nervous and nerve-wracking for me because you're going to a country where drums is very big and important there. Oh, wow. And here you are, a drummer from Kansas City, Missouri, coming to where there's phenomenal drum masters there. And we're talking about Jim Bay and June players you know, not acoustic drum sets, but we're talking about the hands, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? And it was very deep for me. And I got the chance to sing and play acoustic at the Missouri, excuse me, the Mastille Resort. It was a a, a band from there that had a residency there and it was the entertainment in the restaurant area. And they were very friendly and they welcomed us to do our thing. I wasn't gonna do it. Right. Somebody was like, come on church, do it. And I grabbed acoustic and I did a cover of Andre 3000's prototype. And it's, it's, it's visual of it. And it was, it was just awesome trip, and I still can't believe it. It's shared it with my son. They're like, son, we, we're going to do some more traveling. I, 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 I will say this. If you don't have your passport, get your passport. Experience a whole other side of the world, you know? Right, right. Flights was long, but the flight was comfortable. Things are good, but experiences are better, right? Yes. Yeah. Experience is way better. Yeah. Did you get to a chance to put your hands on some of those other drums? No, I didn't see any African drums, and I wish I would have. Mm. Two eyes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, I didn't, and I was looking forward to it. I, I would love that experience to see some African dance and drumming because I would have took it all in. Mm. I definitely I had, had the chance to learn African drumming from Mr. Bird Fleming. That's from here. He's phenomenal drum master, and I learned how to play the June. But I do want to take lessons from him to learn a djembe, mm. and I would love, like someday to purchase one. I feel if you, if you say you about this, you need to really be about your craft, about this music, and study. Never stop learning. Right. So, yeah, I, I wished I did see it in Africa, but. You know, I get my I get my, my my funds together. I will take my wife and and my family, and we will, and I'll definitely make sure to see some African drumming. Next time. Next time. Right. You aren't you doing some Are you doing some future work with Jenny Wine? Yes, we do have some 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 dates next month to travel out. I don't I don't have the flight itinerary yet, but but also what I am excited about is I'll be going to New Orleans for the first time for the Essence Festival. He is one of the artists that would be on one of the main stages in New Orleans. I'm excited. First off, I'm excited because I want to eat some good seafood and gumbo. (laughs) And I have friends, family members from New Orleans. So definitely, I'm looking forward to that, to play with Gene Wine. The Essence Festival, my mom and my dad always bought the Essence magazine to celebrate Mm -hmm. us Mm -hmm. and stuff and keep us up on celebrating us doing and achieving goals and they have the Essence Festival in New Orleans and I get to play. Now I'm taking it back to my kid right. days in high right. school. I'll be seeing the little ad they show whoever's headlining on the music festival and stuff and I'm gonna be playing. And you'll be you'll be there. I will be there performing on drums. Wow. With Gene Wine. Wow. It's it's wow. Yeah. That's cool. Living living that's Living cool. some of your dream. 
So I think we plan to play uh, Kings of KC. You want to talk about that one a little bit? It's different than the rest. This song was fully wrote by Lenny Ewer. Again, shout out to my man Lenny. Um, this is a conscious record. Um, talking about some real life um, violence and it's basically saying why can't we come together and live in peace. Um, this record took a lot out of me emotionally and physically because, you know, certain parts I had to hit. My voice was hoarse and stuff. And I produced the music entirely and, and definitely... Um, it was one of the records I knew that I feel that I would try to, for some different peace organizations here, try to keep peace in the neighborhoods and stuff. I would like to submit the record for it. You know, definitely, I know a lot of people haven't heard the record. The record was heavy for some people where they were like, it's just subject matter was too heavy because, I mean, we see it, right. we hear about it in the news, but I felt like I want to... I want to do my version of a record of being self-conscious of what's going on in the world today, equivalent to Marvin Gaye. Right. From my point of view as a Kansas City native, what's going on in the world and going on in my city. You know, that go, there's not only Kansas City Kings, it's different Kings that are at war with other Kings in other cities. We're talking about from St. Louis to Chicago to Texas, you know. We warring with, with each other, you know. And this song is important to me. and. You know, when I listen to it, I don't really like to hear it. Not because it's myself, but it's just, you know, I know how much of heavy it was for other listeners. But it is a beautiful song, though, because there is a positive message at the end it's of what, who we are. Yeah. yeah. And I hear you saying, like, um, it reminds me of a song from the 80s. I think Grace Jones said, it opened the song with, uh, and I still, this ricochets in my head every, every once in a while in different settings, but my voice, my voice is my weapon of choice. I, you definitely have to give me that that song title so I can do my homework. I yeah. listen to it. I stream a lot of music. Yeah. I mean, when I say I stream a lot of music, I stream a lot of music. I put the earbuds in. I just, I love music so much where I don't have to play it. I can just appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I definitely that song, Grace, though. Me too. You gotta, you gotta, before we get done with that, I got to get that song. One of the things I love about my Ubering is it gives me a lot of time. A lot of time in the car with music that I love or music that I haven't heard. Or music that gets pushed at me. If 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 y'all need an Uber, y'all might want to get her car. She needs business cards because her <laughs> playlist give you life. You might have been tired from the gig you play. Her playlist is everything, and it's not just just one side. Oh, shout out to Miss Lisa, yo. She's the truth, definitely. This is gonna get bigger, y'all. I'm manifesting it. This is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm telling you. She's so. the truth. I'm so... I'm going to get some names from you before you go. Yeah. Right? And it'll just keep going from here. Yes. That's one of the things I like is I, I do... Uh, I'm really grateful about the fact that um, I have met several phenomenal artists just by getting in my car. And um, and then from that flows this like community that I feel mm -hmm. like I'm sort of like mapping out within Kansas City mm -hmm. of you, artists you, that are connected, very, you, have you worked together, have been working here a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mission of the radio station is to give a platform for that, you know, give to honor that work, highlight finally, that work. Finally celebrate these artists because, like you said, you are helping because there's so many other artists that just got that one puzzle to take it to the next level. If the other artists meet that artist, like, no, mm -hmm. you keep, just turn it this way. And they're like, oh, there you have it. There you have it. Because I'm very happy with the shaping up of the Kansas City music scene. We have some phenomenal artists from Kansas City, Kansas, that do a lot of shows on the Missouri side. But it's finally, you can feel the, the foundation being built. And with you doing what you're doing and interviewing these artists, you are really helping us take it to the next level. It's awesome to have interviews. Not me, but the radio station, One Kansas City Radio. I'm well, just Kansas. I'm just here facilitating. Oh, well, for sure, you, you're facilitating and giving me here is play this part. But this radio station definitely is is phenomenal. I'm grateful to have known about it. And I definitely want to follow up so I can continue to help to do my support. Yeah, we're gonna we were talking about 
the fact that we might have you come back and do like a live session. Um, We'd love to do live sessions. Yes, I definitely. We'll stream it and you can connect it to your people and we'll connect it to our people and so on and so on. Yeah. So with that, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, This is Lisa on The Blend with One Kansas City Radio. back live with The Blend on One Kansas City Radio. This is Lisa, and I'm being joined by Church Boy. We've been talking all about his work, his yes, roots. Yes, ma'am, we have. Yep. How you were born and raised in Kansas City? Born and raised all in Kansas City. All about Kansas City. All day, every day, 1987. So are we. So are we. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about what work you have coming up that people could maybe ca- come out and see you live and in person. Um. January 18th, I will be at the Blue Room for 5.30, 7.30 for Happy Hour. And then the Truth Band is who I'm playing drums with and singing vocals with. Asa Barnes, our lead singer, will be at the Blue Room on 18th and Vine, January 18th. Basically, I'll be down there all night. So 5.30 to 12 is the workload for me. You're going to see me doing my thing on the drums in the Blue Room. Come out, have a good time. It's going to be dope. That'd be great. I'm going to try to take a night off and, or at least a portion of a night off. Yeah. And slip in. Yeah. Well, enjoy a little bit. Enjoy a little bit. And then bit. get back in the car. Chase my paper. You know it. <laughs> you got to get the paper, you know. <laughs> got to pay the bills. Yes, ma'am. So, um, also, you know a lot of people in Kansas City. Yes, I Doing do. a lot of work. A lot of work. 
Like what, who would you like to highlight? Who would you like us to maybe reach out to or talk about? I would like y'all to reach out to my man, Derek Pierre and Desmond Mason. They have a song that's been playing on the stations, uh, Chocolate Love, that mm-hmm. featured me on it. They've been showing, I appreciate them so much for, for letting me get some shine with them. I take no credit for their success. They did that work and they was nice enough to be some some big brothers and show me love to let me get some radio play with them and I, I appreciate them. I can't thank them enough and I love them and, and it's awesome. And then also my man Aaron Mayfield and his wife Jessica Mayfield, next level. Oh my gosh, that's that is a phenomenal tribute band. Beyond that, we we just did the Make It Funky part two at the Knucklehead Saloon. We paid tribute to James Brown. We paid tribute to a lot of artists that brought the funk. P-Funk, I'm talking about we had a good time. Um, Aaron Mayfield, I love you, brother. He Next Level Productions, hands down, one of the illest 15 pieces, or I believe 15 pieces. We talking about horn section, percussionist, drummer, uh, additional drummer, percussionist to play parts. Two guitar players, an organ player, keyboardist, oh. oh, and background singers. Can't sit down. It's next level, <laughs> hands down. Nobody can touch it. Right. Nobody can touch it. Wow. Wow. All right. Anything else you want to tell us about you, about you, Church Boy? About me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Lisa, since you put it on there, about me, um, I'm I'm looking forward to to. Uh, to expand in with my band, my my band, Three Piece and a Biscuit. That's mm. my band. It's a trio featuring Preston Porley on keys, Jeff Johnson on bass, DJ Austin on drums, and me on vocals and lead guitar. I'm about to pick up singing and playing lead guitar again, give you that that Jimi Hendrix band is a gypsy feel. You know, that's what I'm looking forward to, but with soul R and B and everything, mm-hmm. a little bit of jazz. Um and uh Three Piece and a Biscuit, you can see us every Monday, unless if there's not any problems at the venue at the Juke House on 18th Divine. Three Piece and a Biscuit is the house band for Simeon Taylor with Soul Sessions, open mic poetry jam with DJ Hobo, Tone on Ones and Twos. So that's where you see me at Monday. So when I say I do this music thing, I, I get it in, and then Tuesday is back at the District Biscuit House mm-hmm. where I work at Phenomenal Restaurant. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think that um, we're gonna we're gonna send you off with um, unless you want to sing for us, but you did just a minute ago. <laughs> just um, a little piece, just a little piece, <laughs> a little taste of it. Um, we're gonna send you off with some more of uh, Church Boys music, and then uh, we'll look forward to seeing you either on Monday nights. Yes, ma'am. Right or yes, doors January eighteenth, January eighteenth, five thirty. To 12. And then the, we need to watch for that. You're going to tell us when that EP drops? Yes. I'll right? Keep you With Tech 9? Yeah. So we can take that in. Yes. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you.
place is never known Beyond the stars and Mars We fly, we fall We get a superstar And we pull, we broke And don't even know Bitch, you love your we so good We the best of friends And love to no end We can forever begin Like a bird too afraid to fly But you wear your hair Have a mesmerized Girl your love sends me to the sky Now I know exactly Just how to fly Girl we're with you Everything is Thank you. 
put a smile on my face.